previous lecture, I introduced the Wilson Sommerfeld quantum condition that said that for a periodic motion P d x was equal to n h or the action is quantized. So, let me write this in words action is quantized in units of Planck's constant h and we applied this to applied these two number one a simple harmonic oscillator that is a particle of mass m performing simple harmonic motion and we found that the energy nth level is given as n h nu which matched with whatever explained the black body spectrum earlier. And we also applied it to a particle moving in one dimension say along the x axis confined between x equals 0 and x equals l and we found that E n was given as n square h square over 8 ml square. So, E n was proportional to n square. Let us now apply it to a two dimensional system which will correspond to Bohr model. So, recall what the Bohr model did, Bohr model did was that it considered electrons to move be moving in circular orbits around a nucleus and because angular momentum is conserved the plane of the orbit is the same. We are going to now generalize this. So, we are going to generalize Bohr model to consider possibilities of other kinds of orbits. And what are the other kinds of orbits from classical mechanics? I know that in a 1 over r potential, the orbits are elliptical in general. That means, what I can have is, I can have an electron moving in a circle, I can also have an electron moving in an elliptical orbital and how are these described and you see that they come out naturally from bohr sommerfeld field quantization condition. So, in this again I am going to now first generalize the concept of momentum okay, and I am going to call this generalized momentum. And for our purposes, for our purposes, what I am going to do is define it in the following manner. Corresponding to a variable, okay, that variable could be x, y, z, theta, phi. So, I can take any variable to describe the position and define a generalized momentum. So, what we do for this is write step number 1, 
right energy E in terms of space variables whichever as convenient and 2 p corresponding to that variable let me for the time being call it capital X is given as partial derivative of E divided by partial X dot. So, let me give you an example. Suppose a particle is moving in a two dimensional world then the energy E is given as one half m r dot square where r is the distance plus one half m r square phi dot square where phi is the angle from the x axis. So, what I am writing are in the planar polar coordinates and in addition the potential energy which may depend on r in general a vector, but right now let it be r. Then p r will be defined as partial of E over partial r dot which will come out to be m r dot. Similarly, p phi will be defined as partial E by partial phi dot which will come out to be m r square phi dot. So, this is the concept of generalized momentum and let me show you why it is called generalized momentum. So, we considered a particle moving in two dimensional space let us just confine ourselves to two dimension x and y and we considered the variables that describe this phi and r. So, we have energy which is one half m r dot square plus one half m r square phi dot square plus v r which may depend on the vector itself, but I will take v r only so that it is central potential. Then p r which is d e by d r dot is m r dot and has dimensions of momentum that is linear momentum and p phi corresponding to variable phi is partial e over partial phi dot which is m r square phi dot and this has dimensions of angular momentum all right. So, notice that generalized momentum is not necessarily same the same as linear momentum. It could be angular momentum and the quantum condition now would be so the quantum condition in terms of generalized momentum would be integral p r d r is equal to an integer n let me call it n r h and integral p phi d phi is going to be equal to some n phi h where n r could be 0 1 and so on n phi could be 0 1 and so on. Okay, this is the quantum conditions. Now, notice that now there are two conditions, two quantum conditions on one on r and one on phi and these two quantum conditions determine the orbit. right? So, let us just spend some more time on this. So, I have p r which is m r dot and p phi which is m r square phi dot and the corresponding quantum conditions integral p r d r and is equal to n r h and integral p phi d phi and again since this period 
is equal to n phi h. Let me put a full p here. What is happening is that if you consider the motion in the x y plane with center of force, and we know from classical mechanics that in this case if v r is a equal to minus k over r that is it is an attractive coulomb or gravitation kind of potential then the orbits are like this either they could be circular or they could be elliptical and this has some eccentricity and larger the angular momentum less elliptical is the orbit. So, if I consider suppose the circular orbit has angular momentum L 1 and the elliptical one is L 2 then L 1 would be greater than L 2. This makes sense because if the angular momentum is 0 and suppose angular momentum is 0 L equal to 0 then the motion will be linear passing through the origin. So, in that case the motion would be linear passing through the origin. So, smaller the angular momentum larger the ellipticity or eccentricity of the orbit all right. Now, let us apply quantum conditions. Now, in this case you notice that for a given orbit. So, if there is a given orbit like this there is a distance r 1 smaller distance r 2 and when I calculate for example, p r d r I will be going from r 1 to r 2 p r d r plus to complete the full period I will be coming from r 2 to r 1 p r d r and that would give me both integrals give me the same answer because of the symmetry and therefore, this is nothing but 2 times r 1 to r 2 p r d r. On the other hand for central force like v r equals minus k over r p phi which is m r square phi dot which is nothing but the angular momentum is conserved. This quantity is conserved and therefore, p phi is going to be a constant for a central force. So, now we are now ready to apply all this that we have done so far to calculate energy levels of the system doing a motion in a plane or in a planar orbit in coulombic field and that should give us the same answer as Bohr model. What we are now doing is taking the motion of a particle in a plane around a potential center which is minus k over r and the case of atoms it is nothing but minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 z e square over r where E is the charge of the electron going around all right. But for the time being just for convenience I will keep this as k. So, k equals z e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 and the energy of the system is given as 1 half m r dot square plus 1 half m r square phi dot square minus k over r p r is equal to partial e over partial r dot which is m r dot and the corresponding quantum condition is r 1 to r 2 times 2 p r d r is equal to n r h. The corresponding p phi equation is equal to d partial e over partial r dot which is m r square r dot phi dot 
which is a constant let us call this L and the corresponding condition is MR square phi dot d phi over the whole period that means if I start from one point from this cross and go all over that is we do d phi integral from 0 to 2 pi this is equal to L times 0 to 2 pi d phi this is equal to n phi h which gives me L equals n phi h over 2 pi or n phi h cross which is the same as Bohr's condition. If we considered only orbits, then we have P r is equal to m r dot is equal to 0, L is equal to n phi h cross and the energy would be equal to 1 half m r dot square which will be 0 n phi square h cross square over 2 m radius square minus k over r and with m v square over r equals k over r square with r equals r this will give me the same answer as Bohr model. Now, we are considering the possibility that the particle can also perform motion in r direction. So, there is an r dot involved. So, this gives me the elliptical orbits and for that I have p r d r which is non-zero which is m r dot d r equals n r h. So, now I have two quantum numbers n r and n phi. So, let us calculate this from the energy condition. E equals one half m r dot square plus one half m r square phi dot square minus k over r, which is same as p r square over two m plus l square over two m r square minus k over r I get p r is equal to square root of 2 m e minus L square over r square plus 2 m k over r all right. So, I have p r is equal to 2 m e minus L square over R square plus 2 k over R square root. This orbit is like this, I have an R 1, I have an R 2. R 1 and R 2 are points where r dot is equal to 0 which implies p r is also equal to 0. So, those can be calculated from this expression by writing 2 m e minus L square over r square plus 2 k over r is equal to 0. So, what now I have is therefore, n r h would be equal to integral r 1 to r 2 integral of 2 m e minus L square over R square plus 2 k over R dr times 2. This integral is slightly complicated. So, I will just give you the answer. The answer for this whole thing comes out to be minus 2 pi L minus m k sorry there is a m here there is a m here m k over square root of minus 2 m e that is it. So, this is n r h. I am just giving you the final answer for the integral and this is what is going to determine the 
energy. Now you may wonder why this minus 2 Me, keep in mind that this is a bound state and therefore E is less than 0. So, what we get is, so from the first condition integral P phi d phi is equal to n phi h, I get L equals n phi h cross and from the second condition that integral P r d r is equal to n r h, I get minus 2 pi L minus m k over square root of minus 2 m e equals n r h and therefore, L minus m k over square root of minus 2 m e is equal to n r h cross with a minus sign or L which is n phi h cross, if I substitute that I get n phi plus n r h cross is equal to m k over the square root of minus 2 m e or e equals n phi plus n r equals k square over 2 there will be an m on top and a square h cross a square with a minus sign, which is same as m z a square e raised to 4 over 32 pi square epsilon 0 square h cross a square with a minus sign 1 over times 1 over n square. So, we are getting an energy E which is equal to minus m z square e raised to 4 over 32 pi square epsilon 0 square h cross square 1 over n square. Let me call this n where n is n phi plus n r. Now, by Bohr model, or also because n phi equals 0 would imply 0 angular momentum, I would exclude that and call n phi equals 1, 2, 3 and so on and n theta equals 0, 1, 2 and so on and n equals n phi plus n theta and so energy E n is given by this number which is same as the Bohr answer minus 13.6 z square over n square electron volts. You can calculate this number and that is where it comes out to be. which is exactly the same answer as the Bohr model. What it gives you however are now, let us just analyze this, the Wilson quantum conditions give two quantum numbers. n phi and n r. So, quantum conditions give two quantum numbers n phi and n r and let us see what they mean. n phi h is related to the 
angular momentum and n r is such that n r plus n phi give the energy. So, if n equals n r plus n phi are the same, energy will be the same. However, these are two different orbits. For example, suppose n is equal to 1, I could have n r equals 0 and n phi equals 1. Suppose n equals 2, I could have n r equals 0 and phi equals 2 or n r equals 1 and n phi equals 1. They both give the same energy. Now, what kind of orbits would they be? If n phi is 2, I would expect this to have less eccentricity and that could be a circular orbit. n phi is 1, that is less of an angular momentum, so it could be an elliptic orbit. So, what we have now introduced generalize the idea of these orbits of electrons moving in a plane when they are moving under the influence of uh, Coulomb potential through Wilson Sommer field quantization conditions. Now, we get more orbits than one that have the same energy, however, different quantum numbers. So, to conclude this lecture, we have applied quantum conditions to an electron moving in a plane under the influence of Coulomb potential and what do we find? One energy comes out to be proportional to 1 over n square, same as the Bohr model. More important however, is it gives more than one kind of orbit that is circular as well as elliptic orbits and it, it introduces the idea of more than one quantum number for the same energy. More than one quantum number means there could be more orbits than one orbit which has the same energy and in this case they happen to be circular elliptic orbits of different eccentricities.